Hello and welcome back everybody. Um, today I have with me the KEF LS50 Metas. This speaker retails for 1600 USD and is an evolution of the original LS50 that launched back in 2012. As you can see, uh, the speaker has the familiar looking KEF proprietary UniQ driver which mounts the tweeter concentric to the mid-range so they share the same acoustic center. But this is the 12th iteration of the UniQ, UniQ driver. So it has seen quite a lot of continuous improvements. Uh, so this speaker, while looking similar to its predecessor, is actually quite a bit different internally. The biggest internal difference uh, is that the sound waves coming from the back of the tweeter's diaphragm is coupled to a disc which is made of a synthetic substance called metamaterial. This is essentially tubes. Each of those tubes are set to be tuned to absorb a certain frequency and this disc is supposed to absorb 99% of the unwanted sound radiating, radiating from the rear of this tweeter and it's set to absorb 600 hertz on upwards uh, and that theoretically should be resulting in cleaner sound. Also the section where the tweeter is mounted on the uh, throat of the mid-range driver has been revamped. Also the internal bracing of the cabinet has been said to be improved. These cabinets are quite heavy. They might look petite but they're quite considerably heavy um, these are some vis there are some visible cosmetic changes as well including this beautiful matte finish this piece as you can see uh, is in is is called mineral white also it's available in carbon black titanium gray and the most elusive and super gorgeous royal blue which I wish I could have gotten my hands on but I like the white finish as well. Speaker is rear ported like its predecessor. Port location and flare is offset to delay the onset of turbulence. Uh, and the flexible port wall is set to prevent resonances from coloring the mid-range. Specs wise, they indicate a minus 6 dB frequency of 47 Hz. Nominal impedance of 8 ohms. But minimum impedance dips to 3 ohms. So you would need an amplifier that is stable uh, and gutsy at uh, those low impedances. So my system set up analog sources where my Riga, R, uh, Riga P10, Planar 10, with the Coetz Black MC cartridge. Uh, I also used a Luxman direct drive with uh, the 2M Black MM cartridge. Phono preamps were used from the budget iFi Zen Phono to the superb chord symphonic which I uh, reviewed some time ago. The i5 Zen Phono review is coming soon. Digital, I used a blue node, uh, blue sound, Note 2 streamer, and a Peachtree DAC. Amplifiers, I used quite a few different ones here. And Audio Lab 6000A review coming soon. The Jolita 3502S, this is the previous version of the Black Ice amps that are released by Jolita now. And also, the super awesome Riga Athos. Ah, uh, yes, uh, uh, definitely coming uh, soon on that review. Coming on that very soon. So, how does it sound? Immediate impressions are a stunningly deep soundstage, provided you have the room to keep them away from the front wall uh, and boundaries. Exceptional resolution in the mid-range and high frequency. Satisfying bass too, but it depends on the music you listen to. Uh, also, a few things about these speakers, right? They really shine as you feed them better amplification. The Audio Lab 6000A with its 50 watt solid state at 8 ohms, 75 at 4 ohms, sounded really good. It got better as you fed it power coming from the Jolita 3502S, which has about 70 watts of power coming from KT150 tubes, but then you power it with uh, the nearly uh, 4800 USD Riga Athos, and wow, that brought out the best in the LS50 metas. So that tells you that 
the speaker will not be outclassed even when you pair it with when you power them with amps of that price range and uh, another thing is you have to give them breathe, uh, room to breathe and they will definitely throw you a deep sound stage it's the kind of sound stage that you can that people talk about reaching out walk up to and touch instruments type of realism very deep and the sonic imagery is locked and stable from your listening position i had them uh five feet from the wall behind them and a minimum of about four to five feet from the side wall they were about seven feet apart i sat seven feet in front of them at the apex if you have the room to place them like i said they will give you the best sound stage even about two feet from the front wall gives you some of that depth perception not that they will sound bad any closer to the wall behind them you simply won't be hearing the sound stage that the, uh, that these things have to serve uh okay so uh let's talk some albums now um first up is first up is Monica Sutherland and Bill Evans Walls for Debbie so uh this album uh is an English Swedish album uh from 1964 and it showcases the mid-range capability of these speakers. Monica Sutherland's voice is very much in your room, real and natural sounding. Uh track 2 is called I hope I don't butcher the name of this track because it's in Swedish. Ja vet en daily rusa. I've heard this song so many times and that's the only reason I can say it somewhat close to what it's supposed to be pronounced as. Listening to this track uh, to this track through the matters I simply melted into a puddle the whole presentation her beautiful voice singing in Swedish her delicate modulations as she's singing her breath intakes the lyricism in Bill Evans piano Chuck Israel's bass, Larry Bunker's uh percussion work, uh his snare and cymbal brushes are all so well timed and arranged. The presentation is intimate. It's very clear and the sound stage is very organized. So, uh the presentation of uh the entire album through these speakers is just absolutely you are there in the studio type of uh sound really really good next up let's talk about miles davis birth of cool this one's called the complete birth of cool has um extra side 3 and side 4 uh but here in side 1 um the name of the song is called deception deep sound stage again beautiful resolution in the mid range horns sound absolutely wonderful then there is that clearly defined mid bass and lower bass very satisfying takes you by surprise coming from uh speakers uh of this size especially the mid range mid bass driver being only 5 and a quarter inch uh, diameter Uh, switching to uh streaming from Quobus some digital albums Emmanuel Bertrand and Pascal Amoyo uh the album is Brahms Sonatas and Love Songs if you like cello and piano you have to listen to this album through the matters the tones from the cello and piano sounded deep weighty and very clear again nicely locked in sound stage Next up is uh Bobby Hutcherson's album Linger Lane is the name of the album and the track here is called NTU. Bobby Hutcherson's marimba sounds fantastic through these matters. Uh the tone is fantastic. It's the presentation and the details are very relaxed, very unforced and they just come to you. You don't have to strain hard to listen to them. They they are very captivating that way. um then you have after the marimba you have the accompanying bass percussion and fender rhodes making the sound of this album not only relaxing but also very groovy the bass from the kick drum is quite well formed and full sounding now you may not feel the kick in your gut type of sound uh but you hear the 
superb art articulation in the bass frequencies quite well. About four minutes into the song, the cymbal work in the percussion, in the drums is really, really great. And here, via the meadows, it sounded so much, so well uh, formed, very natural sounding and very airy, a lot of air. Uh, in the symbol, uh, like like almost the real thing. You turn up the volume and the images scale proportionately without collapsing into one another. Um, and these speakers maintain their composure at uh, high volumes as well. Last track I'll talk about today is called Barley. It's from Liz Wright's album called Grave. I don't generally listen to gospel music much. Uh, but this track's recorded really well. This track starts with the bass drum. And man, can you hear the pedal hitting the skin of the bass drum. The texture is so well reproduced here. The bass guitar follows suit. And then Liz's, Liz Wright's voice, uh, deep and husky. Uh, her vocals uh, fill the soundstage. Her her voice is spooky and real sounding through the meadows. Mid-range and the rest of this frequency spectrum is done full justice here. So guys, in conclusion, this these speakers offer superb transparency that reminds me of uh, perhaps the Magnapan 1.7i's that I had. Um, and the mid-range del delicacy and the sweet airy highs of the Harbeth SHL5, which I owned. Surprisingly full bass, but then again, that depends on the type of music you listen to. I, I completely understand all the fuss about these speakers, um, uh, reviews from Stereophile, ranking them as their class A. Uh, if you have the room to place them properly, to give them plenty of room away from the walls to breathe, power them adequately. And if your taste veers towards music that espouses certain sophistication, certain level of sophistication and subtlety, and you demand that for your listening satisfaction, then these speakers will make you happy. Given my experience with these, um, I want to listen to the Kef reference series speakers as well. That's coming up next. So that's it, my friends. Uh, like I said, coming up next, I plan to do videos of uh, the Riga Ethos that I spoke about, the integrated um, and the Audiolab 6000A integrated. And yes, the Kef, Kef reference series. Uh, let's start with probably the R3. Uh, that will be coming up too. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Please click the subscribe button and the bell-shaped icon next to it so you get notified when I upload videos. Also, please feel free to share and like these videos. Uh, but for now, bye. We'll see you soon. Thank you.